Hello, Christmas is a wonderful time. Last year, just under 700 people joined us in Holy Cross Church on Christmas Eve to hear the good news of Jesus' birth. This year, of course, Christmas is going to be very different because of social distancing. We can't gather as we did last year. Social distancing is difficult because separation even affects our well-being. Christmas, though, is all about social distancing. Jesus was born, lived, died and rose again to bridge the gap between us and God. And so for those who trust in Jesus, not even death can separate. This is how the Bible puts it. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is why Jesus is a forever King. Good news not just for this year or for future years, but forever. So come with me. Let's hear this wonderful story again. Everything was ready. God was coming to help his people, just as he promised in the beginning. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? God promised a king. He wasn't an ordinary king like we see in the books. He would be different. He would be a new king, a rescuing king, a forever king.
one precious night God kept his Christmas promise and this is what happened. There was a young girl named Mary who was engaged to a man named Joseph. One morning Mary was minding her own business when suddenly an angel appeared. He was Gabriel. Don't worry Mary, you will have a special baby. He will be called Jesus. He is God's own son. He is the one. He is the rescuer. Are you sure? Can it be true? Definitely. God will sort it. Is anything too wonderful for God? Later, the angel appears to Joseph. Joseph, I am an angel from God. It is true that Mary is going to have a special baby. That's amazing. I can't believe it. So Mary trusted God more than what her eyes could see, and she believed. I am God's servant. Whatever God says, I will do. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. God promised that his new king would be born in a little town called Bethlehem. So Mary and Joseph set off for Bethlehem. It seems a very long way, Joseph. Don't worry, Mary. I'll go really slowly. And look, I have a donkey. It will make the journey way more easier.
It took a long time, but eventually Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem. The only problem was that everyone else had got there early and had taken all the rooms. So Joseph went to the next B&B &B and knocked at the door. No way! We were full hours ago. There's even someone sleeping on the kitchen table. So they went on and Joseph knocked on the door of another inn and told them his sad story. Hello. Oh, I'm very sorry but we are full, you're very, very late. Um, as I can see, you are in quite dire need. Much fun and have to that, I don't want to be in you. It's rather smelly and rather nasty. But, um, Getting nothing. And there, in a stable, among the chickens, donkeys, sheep, in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born, God's special new king. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm, and they made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. That same night, in amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. God put it there to show where Jesus was. Now the shepherds were out in the fields warming themselves when suddenly loads of angels appeared. The shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, 
down the narrow cobbled streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, past an inn, and round the corner, until, at last, they reached a tumble-down stable. They caught their breath, then quietly they tiptoed inside. They went in to see the promised new king, a rescuer king who would be a light to light up the whole world, chasing away the darkness forever. They weren't the only ones who had heard the good news about the promised new king. Meanwhile, far away in the east, some wise men saw the very same star that the shepherds had seen the star that God had put in the sky when Jesus was born. They knew it was a sign. They knew what it meant. A very special king had been born. The king for all God's people, baby Jesus, was the promised new king. At dawn, they packed up their camels and wrapped gifts for the baby. They brought their most precious treasures of all, frankincense, gold and myrrh, special, sparkly, lovely smelling, gleaming things just right for a king. They traveled across the endless deserts, up steep mountains, down in the deep, deep valleys, night and day and day and night, for hours that turned into days, that turned into weeks, that turned into months and months. Are you sure we should have followed the star such a long way? Yes, we're sure it will lead us to the new king. Look, the star stopped right over Bethlehem. Let's go and find him. Until at last they reached the little town of Bethlehem. But wait, it wasn't a palace. There weren't any guards, trumpets, flags, red, red carpets. Did they get it wrong? Or was this what God meant? Yes, it was. Это правда. Да, есть. Igen, ez volt. Külle, Seoli. Ja, das war. That was. Yes, it was. Baby. Wise men bowed before the little king. They gave him their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. But this child was a new kind of king. Though he was prince of heaven, he had become poor. And though he was mighty God, he had become a helpless baby. This king hadn't come to be the boss. He had come to be a servant, 
a rescuer, a forever king. And so that is the story of the coming of Jesus, which we celebrate at Christmas and this special night. Happy Christmas!